Hello there, dear friends. Hello there. Welcome back, everybody. Please do subscribe to Evolutionary Energy Arts. Yesterday, we were talking about the magnetic pole reversal cover-up, the flood stories, the universal nature of it. Uh, you know, it's fascinating for a lot of people that haven't studied different cultures to recognize the fact that there are so many repeating stories all over the world might surprise you but this is the case with more than one topic even and even different aspects of certain topics repeating themselves ee arts has unique videos uh, we've been going deep into some legends and things like that we just put up one that's talking about two races of subterranean and interdimensional beings in appalachia and in fact in primarily uh, the area around North Carolina, where it joins with Tennessee and northern uh, Georgia. Beautiful, beautiful place, beautiful area where I got to spend some time living there. And honestly, the vibe there is just amazing. You can feel the quote-unquote spirit realm being very close there. It, you can. You really can do that. And with our perceptions changing, it's just getting more and more fun. Absolutely. And then we were talking yesterday about the hidden history of certain type of giants with mm -hmm. double set of teeth. Again, giant stories are something that you see all over the globe. And then we we're getting behind the truth of the dogmen, skinwalkers and werewolves. Uh, and then we were also talking about the whole vampire legend and the connection to the crown there. And before that, oh, the A word. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Spiritual DNA, which a lot of people... I don't think got, but the fact that DNA is not just something physical. And, you know, I think that's something that probably most people don't realize, uh, unless you're somebody that's followed a certain spiritual quest for truth. Very important to understand these things. When our DNA goes beyond our body, what exactly is it communicating with? Absolutely. So uh, I just saw a ton of comments about people wanting to talk about uh, RH negative blood and also talking about things related to DNA and perhaps intervention in manipulation of DNA. A lot of you guys are probably very aware of this. This, this article goes back to 2018, according to a particular theory. People with RH negative blood don't come from Earth. Some say that 15% of people who have RH negative blood could be a separate humanoid species from the majority. A pregnant woman's own blood might attack an RH positive fetus in the womb. RH negative blood has the exclusive ability to withstand or resist certain diseases. The Basque area of Spain has the highest percentage of people with RH negative blood at 30%. So, yeah, that's like twice the average. <clears throat> and it's fascinating to see this. Now, my mom, RH negative, she was actually AB negative, uh, the actual rarest of all rare types. You know, there are new types, too. And that's maybe something we should do in the future because this is a time of mutation and change. And we were talking about that with the pole shift uh, video. The fact that this is when new species come out and we see that that is happening. It is happening. Now, of course, the controller society that we live in is trying to control the disclosure of that. But still, they're, they're not going to be able to hide all this. So it's fascinating to see this. I myself am uh, RH negative as well. Now, Cindy, who has in many ways much stronger abilities than I do as far as perception of a quote-unquote paranormal variety with her channeling abilities, is actually positive. So, you know, that's interesting too. If you If you are of a RH positive blood type, it doesn't mean that you don't have any sort of abilities. You, This is something that's in all of us. It's just dormant in so many people. It can be trained. And we're talking about things like ESP and clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, 
Uh, it's fascinating because as a little kid in sixth grade, that's when I first started to get fascinated with all this and start to grab every book I could get at the public library, bring them home. I was a bad little boy. I was bringing home a dozen books. Well, I couldn't read a dozen books at one time, but I would be attempting to read a dozen at one time. Mm -hmm. I remember those days, but I was looking at mostly the books with just pictures on them because those were the fun ones. Where's the pictures? But yeah, I mean, this is a very fascinating topic. I, I think the controllers do allow information out in in certain ways but i like to go with my experience and it's it's been my experience working with so many other people that there doesn't seem to be any one better than the other when it comes to abilities because bottom line is we all have them and then i think it does matter like if you look at the family lineage you know look at your mom look at your grandma look at things like like that you know but there is definitely something different here and you know it was so important at one point that they wouldn't allow people to marry if they had this you know like that's the end all be all are you going to have children period so it, it is curious how they laid this out there very interesting absolutely so one theory suggests that people with rh negative blood are descendants of the hyperborean race a blonde-haired blue-eyed race of humans hitler believed them to be the superior aryan race and some link this race to Yeshua, or Jesus of Nazareth. Might this blonde race, or sometimes red-headed, have been another human race on Earth bred by extraterrestrial geneticists? Or are they extraterrestrials themselves, stranded on Earth for some reason? Possibilities don't end there. There must be more than a dozen unexplained humanoid races or species ranging from Neanderthals and Denisovans to the truly alien-looking humanoids such as the Nazca and Paracas mummies in Peru, which we talked about numerous times. And in fact, you know, they've gotten DNA from those and they don't match any known existing DNA. And regardless of that, those skulls do not line up with what we know as far as actual facts about Homo sapiens skulls. You know, our skulls are made of these fused plates. The plates become fused as we... Uh, become adults as we grow up before they're floating they literally float the plates are not the same they don't have the same plates that we have as homo sapiens thus they are definitely not what we would call modern day humans they are something different where the spinal cord attaches is in a different place they are obviously a distinct separate species from humanity, yet close enough to interbreed. Again, many people will just, not many, uh, honestly, I, I think it's it's far less people. They just tend to be a little bit vocal uh, because they were brought up with this line of thinking that the earth is all that there is. There are no aliens. There are just demons and angels. But then they can't define what a demon is you know, or what a fallen angel is. Well, it's a fallen angel. Okay, well, what's a fallen angel? Well, you know, angels are a class of being that were created by God and, you know, just a little bit above us in some ways, but they don't have all of our... Again, it doesn't define what they are. Define them as a species. You know, where do they come from? Well, you know, they come from heaven. Again, you know, where are, which heaven? Which heaven? Are we talking about the upper fourth density? Are we talking lower fifth density? Are we talking sixth density? Are we talking something above that? Again, there's no specificity. It's just a generalization that comes out of a, a lack of facts, a lack of understanding. And we have everything we need, really. It's just a matter of putting this all together because it, there's a very, very clear picture that can be painted if, if we're willing to deprogram our mind from the programming that the controllers have given us. So, you know, this is fascinating. A woman with RH negative blood can't have an RH positive baby without medical assistance. That's something that doesn't really, that's, that's something that you wouldn't see happen in nature with the way the species evolve. 
You know, when you look at what's going on in Earth, and we see this news, Blackstone reaches $4.7 billion deal to buy Ancestry.com. The firm's going to take about 75% ownership stake in the Utah-based company. They have $156 billion in a cash pile, and a lot of it's ready to buy up real estate when the crash comes. And thus, we will own nothing, they will own everything. Your DNA is going to be, you know, in their data uh, if you've done Ancestry.com. And again, your DNA is already in their data if they've if you've done 23andMe as well. Because when we when we look to 23andMe, as you see this headline, Gil Bates, China, 23andMe, and your DNA, you know, the Wojcicki sisters, one of whom is head of 23andMe, the other one is head of YouTube. And again, they're they're also um, tied by marriage or were to the founder of Google, one of the founders of Google. This is a tangled web here, very very tangled web. Why do they have all of our DNA information? Why are they so interested in our DNA? And the answer, you know, some people don't want the answer, and the answer is that Earth, for the longest time, has been a genetic melting pot. There is a great experiment going on. There's always been a great experiment. The great experiment started out as a very, very beautiful, benevolent experiment. In this age, it's been hijacked by these dark beings that came here, actually, in still, in a time when there was still a lot of light. They infiltrated, and then they slowly, as the earth descended through the yugas and we've we've done that cycle of the yugas many times and, and i want to get this um through because this is something that's so key to understanding as we go through these timelines everything changes the beings that are around us change if if i want to make it in biblical terms the golden age is a heavenly age Who's around us? Beings that we would call angels. Because, why angels? Because they're benevolent. It's they, They're non-terrestrial. They don't come from Earth. They existed before Earth existed. You know, and there is, uh, from the Bible, when Yeshua said, before Abraham was, I am, right? Oh, stone him! He's saying he came before, how could that be? He's a descendant. But that's not understanding the bigger us. Again, the body is nothing but a vehicle. And yet this vehicle does affect our spiritual DNA. Oh yeah, every time we incarnate, there are a lot of consequences to an incarnation. A lot of things we can gain, and sometimes, you know, they can be as well a little hazardous. They can waylay us at times. They can give us tendencies that we might have to navigate through. Sometimes there could be dark tendencies that we're taking on through a particular DNA lineage that will have to work on overcoming those dark tendencies and and still, you know, being of the light, so to speak. So when you see the Treta here, this is the Silver Age. And, you know, this is an age that's mostly benevolent. If we're looking at this as a heavenly age on Earth, uh, this is a pretty damn good time for the most part. But it was during this age that some beings started to infiltrate. And then as we went down into the Bronze Age, they started to make their move and take take control. As these beings couldn't hang here anymore because their frequencies were too high. So they no longer became visible to us. When we saw these angelic beings with our own eyes... There's legends of the ancient and shining ones. Shining ones like what? They glittered and, and shined like light itself. These these are the benevolent beings of, of a positive, benevolent, beneficial to humankind, um, and beneficial to life in general background that as we cycled through and got into the heavier, denser, ages they they just they vibrate too too high a frequency to be there they could still reach out to us and we could still reach out to them when we're in deep prayer and deep meditation 
but the ones that are around us are of a lower frequency and those are the ones that have been influencing us the, the strongest through the dark age although in the dwapara here in the bronze age we can see those dark dark beings as if they're physical they themselves start to disappear as we go into the dark age itself and then they become part of the myths and legends but we're going back into that bronze age now and so some of these beings are going to become very very visible very very real in front of our eyes again the good news is so will the benevolent ones as we go closer on up towards that age of heaven on earth mm -hmm. And being given new understandings, I wanted to touch a moment again on the belief systems and our DNA and experimentation because our belief systems, what we believe at our core can change our DNA. If, if you sit and meditate on certain aspects of your of yourself and your and your health and deliberately pull in oxygen and if you know, in your soul this oxygen extra oxygen is what you are pulling it in it's going to help you it's going to be beneficial to you more beneficial to you than if you were not having that understanding of how beneficial oxygen can be there's been many studies on this as far as belief systems go and our energetic dna and how we can work with that to bring ourselves to a higher state of consciousness now we look at consciousness and information and the information coming from the sun the light that is coming to us is bringing changes and it's bringing us new understandings many many years ago uh, people would maybe read the bible and they wouldn't understand that a lot of things that were in the bible are actually technology and still many people are in a place where if their belief system is threatened, they feel they need to lash out or they need to correct somebody because the belief system is everything. And I know that goes into this experimenting as well. It's like how much of the belief system can affect the, the changes of the actual DNA? And the answer is quite a lot. So it would only make sense that they try to harness this belief system to see how how much they can actually harness the human spirit the human soul and they've done a good job but the sun is coming in we are getting more rays we are getting more information we are coming to an understanding that we are so much more than what we've been told all of our lives but we have to be compassionate to other people about their belief systems because that's everything to them and they need it right now and 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 that's okay so finding that ability to be open to one another is where we need to be so this is from Species with Amnesia, uh, Robert Seffer's work. If mankind evolved from the same African ancestor, then everybody's blood would be compatible, but it's not. It's pretty simple. Where did the RH negative come from? Why does the body of an RH negative mother carrying RH positive child try to reject her own offspring? It's because humanity isn't one race, but a hybrid species. Absolutely. And again, all of creation is all about consciousness exploring and learning it's why why is life in abundance because it is it's in abundance out there this fact has been hidden from us they want you thinking there's nothing but earth everything revolves around earth uh, yes that's the controllers they don't want you knowing that earth has had multiple species on it many different visitors const constantly coming and going from it even in this dark age there's extraterrestrial and interdimensional beings that are coming and going from earth every single day so as you see ab negative one percent of the population b negative two percent ab positive three a negative six it goes on up to o positive being 38 <coughs> percent of the population and a positive 34 percent so it's a interesting thing to look into absolutely and who could give blood to who it it really boggles the mind there's no way again there's no way that humanity is one race created at one time 
that's just that's just an impossibility how the rh factor travels through a family bloodline it's a recessive trait doesn't mean it disappears oh no absolutely you know you, you could have two parents that'll have black hair and brown eyes and then all of a sudden if there is somewhere along the line this trait you might find that you have a, a freckled red-headed pale-skinned a uh, little child bouncing around. And here we see Anunnaki blood, RH negative. Now, one thing to realize, too, is Anunnaki is a big term. And it doesn't refer to just one species. Uh, this is more of a, a group of beings. Because if we even look at Nibiru, we find different races on Nibiru. And again, for those that are, are not totally familiar or just tuning into our channel, well, where do we get our information from? Well, you know, part of it is what everybody would get, you know, comparative study of which, you know, again, Cindy, this, this part of this duo, she's intuitive. Um, I'm the one that's studied since I was a little kid. So, you know, 50 years of studying and going deep as well as introspection and meditation um i'm a reiki master teacher i've studied qigong for uh, gosh i don't even know uh i guess about 37 years um now as far as other forms of energy work and understanding you know how the universe works and gone deep into all the different comparative mythologies I've made it a point to take part and experience every different religious uh, ceremony and culture I possibly could. And I've delved deep into things even like chaos magic, uh, ceremonial magic, Wicca, uh, everything I possibly could to experience firsthand what there is to experience. And again, uh, with Cindy, now she's extremely gifted individual she can trance channel she can also channel without going fully under in trance this is part of her makeup why can't she do these things well it's past life experience because you know she's had multiple lives doing this and why am i the way that i am it's past life experience as well as about half of my lives have always been uh, of a sort where I'm either a Buddhist monk or something of that line where my entire life is spent dedicated to meditation and going within. And then the other half of the lives is trying to teach and trying to show the reality of what's going on. So when we talk about Anunnaki, um, again, this is, you could almost, well, well like on Earth, you know, and we're, we're getting across now. Earth is full of different extraterrestrial species, the ancestors thereof. It's the same thing with Nibiru, too. There's more than one type of being living on Nibiru. And they do make reference to that, too, when they talk about the EGG. And, and, and then they separate them from the Anunnaki. Uh, the EGG are beings that we would associate with, you know, having a big impact on Mars. And when we look at Mars, Mars is a planet that looks like it's been through uh, the ringer and has and Nibiru is very much um, now at, it's more of a spaceship than it is a planet as it's been decimated and destroyed and uh, as they've gone through destroying the environment and it, they're doing it here too but they're blaming it on us when in fact it's them that's destroying this environment mm -hmm. It, it is and that's really really sad so when we when we look at these terms you know like Anunnaki it is really widespread those who come from heaven to earth but if we look at us and who we are we all come have a galactic history we all have some type of galactic blood in us and depending on our dominant galactic history is going to depend on what kind of abilities that we have coming in so i think it's important to note that yes across the board we can all develop these things 
and understand ourselves to be one but there there is some interesting information that says okay well this one is a little why is this one different you know what does actually make it different so when we look at the frequency map of the rh negative blood group now this one this map will show you the darkest area 25 percent plus it's this area spain into france where the Basques are. And so you see 25% plus 30% of the Basque population. But we do see, you know, here as well, a large percentage of the population. Uh, India over towards, I guess, Bangladesh and then heading up into Tibet and into what now is controlled by China and then all the way up into Russia as well very dark and then over here in the southern part of africa sub-saharan africa you see some as well so it's it's really curious to see this and it speaks to the diasporas that have happened on this planet with cataclysms uh ebola protection in rh negative blood as we've talked about some blood types have certain genetic predispositions and also have certain tendencies to be protected. So we know now, you know, Angelina Jolie went and, you know, had an operation just because she had the high likelihood of developing a certain type of cancer. We see that with 23andMe and Ancestry and stuff. It gives us this knowledge that maybe can be dangerous in some ways where it, it'll make us do things we wouldn't normally do having uh, this knowledge. But Many, many people have been put to death over the years for not going along with the status quo and the belief system that was put out there by the control group. Now, the control group has always worked behind the scenes. It said a day to the Lord is as if a thousand years and a thousand years as if a day. And we've seen the Sumerian kings list with people having 40,000 year reigns, 10,000 year reigns, uh, kings that is, obviously, reigns on earth of these unimaginable lengths. But then in the yugas, people do live longer. And then of course, extraterrestrials might have a totally different lifespan than humans. There were Templars that were wiped out and you know basically uh, tortured and murdered in mass the, the cathars as well uh, gnostics absolutely were tortured and considered blasphemous and so they didn't go along with the church's thinkings and they were put to death you know there was this line of thought of a certain bloodline descending from yeshua jesus and you know that being the true holy grail and again anything that went against controller mainstream philosophy could lead to your death we've had witch hunts inquisitions a lot of that was done just to wipe out certain you might you know extraterrestrial lineages where people had more abilities than others or abilities that could threaten the power structure that's on the planet right now that was on the planet then too it's the same power structure and and like I said, there is ability, ways we can build these abilities, and they know that. They know that we are evolving. They make us so afraid of the sun. You know, they either make it so, oh, you got to put these chemicals on your skin that might give you the big C word, or or you know, they might go after the belief system. Well, you know, your your sun worshiper that makes you evil. So they have ways of getting us to not want to pursue our own innate ability to widen our perspective and grow our abilities they just they have this way about them and again we have to go back to compassion when it comes to our loved ones and when it comes to growing out of your belief systems when when you're with people you once had a common belief system and you could study with them but sometimes after a while you're with the same people and it's like you just know this is wrong you just know it's wrong and as much as you care about these other folks you just cannot go there anymore and that you're evolving you're evolving you're starting to come to that understanding like oh my you know there is so much more 
than what we see past this 3D veil. I, I just can't comprehend. So it helps you, it makes you want to seek out other information to help you grow and understand because boy, gosh, once you, once you start waking up, there is so much information to go through and it does take time. And c people that you have things in common with definitely help you process this information. So does RH negative blood type equal alien heritage? Why does the human race have so many different blood types and RH values when we're all supposedly coming from Adam and Eve? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, they were so different. I've seen it in, in um, biblical circles, creationist, biblical, literal, fundamentalist circles where they think that, you know, Shem, Ham, and Japheth were literally one of them came out uh, of... Yeah, I don't even know what the political correctness is, but each one representing the, th you know, three different major races as if they're totally different. And then that's the foundation point. And that's just absolute silliness. It doesn't make any scientific sense. There is no basis in fact for that. And again, when we look to the story of Noah and we recognize that story is 2000 years later than the original stories. At least, if not more, it was taken from a different story. So the names don't even match up. The, the Greek flood story is 800 years minimum older than the biblical. The Sumerian, thousands of years older. The, the Hindu, probably thousands of years older too. Again, you know, these stories are universal. So there is a, a, a reality behind that. Absolutely. But this is the controller's distortion. Ah, you have to have the right dogma or you're going to burn forever. Yeah. So, and that's, there's no basis in that reality either. That's not a reality. That is exactly what you tell little kids so they don't get in themselves in trouble finding out that mommy and daddy is Santa Claus and the and the Easter Bunny. If you go into that closet and you see something you shouldn't see, oh, hellfire and damnation, little boy. Or you'll get you'll get the belt, or you'll get a whopping, and you don't question mommy and daddy. And, and you know, really think about it. Sit with that. How cruel is that to tell a child that if you believe this thing, you're going to burn in 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 hell forever? Uh, that's just wrong. I don't care how you paint it. So here you see a quote. I came across a very interesting whistleblower by the names of James Casbolt. He claims to be a former MI6 agent who worked in black ops drug trafficking operations during the mid to late 90s London, England, spoken out about black operations that involved the recruitment and study of RH negative people. He was born into Project Mannequin, a mind control genetic manipulation program run by the NSA in the U UK. The NSA is an American organization that runs in and outside of the U.S. He stated he was chosen for Project Mannequin, which is a British MK Ultra sub project. Due to his father's involvement in the Illuminati intelligence community and because he possesses rare Celtic genetics, he and his family have RH negative blood. He has reported that NSA recruits Celtic RH negative people because they believe people with these genetics have a predisposition to have paranormal experiences and psychic abilities, such as telepathy, precognition, and clairvoyance. For many generations, ancient Celtic people practiced psychic and magic rituals for their pagan religion of Druidy. The NSA and other top intelligence agencies believe psychic abilities are in the genetic memories of the RH negative bloodlines. Even if RH negative individual hasn't practiced uh, PSI abilities, they can easily be trained to do so. The deeper we go into this, you know, this is a reality. Why does it sound like we are pretty damn sure of what we're talking about? It's because we have firsthand knowledge of these things from multiple aspects. You know, we, we have contacts within these alphabet soups that watch us. We know they watch us. They make no bones about watching us. And they understand Cindy's gifts. They understand me too. And and they know who we are. And, and they watch us all the time. Um, as long as we stay within a certain paradigm, I guess, as long as we... 
uh, you know, are careful, so to speak. I mean, we are telling you guys the truth. We're trying to wake you guys up. Uh, and many of you guys are already awake. And many of you guys may have, you know, found yourself in the middle of one of these black ops. And maybe your family is in a black op. It's much more of the population than you would believe. Uh, there's a lot of the population uh, that has, and everybody does, have these abilities. But, but some people can develop these abilities to an, a, a degree where if they were under a different government's power and control, they could be utilized. Because again, there is a control grid on this planet. Yet, each aspect of the control grid, they really do compete with each other. So, you know, on some level, are all the governments working for the same agenda? Yes. But on another level, do they actually compete with each other, even, you know, come into conflict? Yes, that too, obviously. We could even go to Deuteronomy 32.8, where it talks about uh, the planet being divided. And again, the oldest translation is Elohim from the Bible. And again, everything is a distortion because the true Elohim are benevolent beings. But then that word, just like the word God, gets attributed to so many different beings, even beings we would call demonic in reality. Even beings that are really uh, so much the adversary of humanity, truly are Satan, you know, can be called God or gods. This is the reality. But these groups understand it. Again, the the NSA, uh, the CIA, FBI. You know, we again we know we know people that have been through their psychic programs. It's real, and you you know when you talk about MK Ultra and the mind control aspects, again you know we 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 do know firsthand about that as well. And, you know, I've shared with you guys over the years that my father, who was of Mexican and Native American lineage, now he was O positive, he was, he was 12 years through Catholic school. And also, he also had no doubts that there were aliens. He had seen a UFO. He had, he had firsthand knowledge of extraterrestrials. Now, my mother actually comes from more of this Celtic background and also from the area um, of the Carpathians on her father's side. And yet, my grandma read tea leaves. They saw ghosts. You know, they had all sorts of paranormal, quote-unquote, interactions. And that's part of why I chose this lineage to come into, because there was uh, a DNA potential to be utilized for this particular job that we're doing. And, and this is a mission for Cindy and I. It's a mission. It's a passion because it's our mission. And so, you know, that's why, you know, we're so sure of it. And then just the interaction, because I've shared with you guys that I woke up in December of 2017. And I won't go too, too long on this video. Try to keep it in a certain space. But... Uh, and I saw I was being sabotaged by a tall gray who m was totally manifest. I could see as if it was as solid as a person hunched over the uh, eight foot tall ceiling. It was bending over because it was actually a little bit taller than that. And it was trying to sabotage my lower Dantian. And your Dantian is your, uh, it's a well of life force energy. So it was sabotaging me on purpose because it knows who I am and it knows that my whole purpose for this incarnation is to do what I'm doing with you guys right now. So it was trying to weaken me. So, but that's not the first time I've seen uh, an extraterrestrial. And then it looked away from me and it went into a meditative state and I watched it slowly disappear. It was just like in Star Trek. That would be the best way I could describe it where it's beam me up Scotty it goes from being solid to um, <clears throat> a fuzzy energetic pattern, and then it's gone. My kids were basically tormented by seeing gray aliens on a regular basis growing up, as, as this is something that, you know, they do follow certain bloodlines. 
and I would let Cindy, if she wanted to share, but she can also verify because her, her whole experience has been the same thing. So I've had encounters since, I mean, my earliest encounters I could remember were at five years old, um, but they've been all my life. There was uh, an extraterrestrial in the bedroom at seven, and it was more of an Eben, uh, what we would call an Eben. Uh, so, I mean, this is something that has just been nonstop, and Cindy and I together have encountered many different, including some that look just like Ariman, that were outside of our camper in the Nevada desert right next to Area 51. And, and there, there is something too, you know, when we're speaking of that MK Ultra program, and we're speaking of energetic DNA, and how that operates when they do take people, and they do certain things to them, in order to create certain abilities to come out, and then they have children and these offspring then pick up this energetic DNA. You just never know who you're talking to that may have had these experiences somewhere in their family line. So you always want to have compassion and treat things with tenderness and kindness. Now, I, I, I do also want to say it, it's important to understand when you go through things like this, you have that basis in reality because people who experience this normally do not step out into the world because there's great consequences. Okay, so I just wanted to share that background with you. So is it alien in origin? Well, again, in reality, uh, we all are pretty much one background or another. This, this planet for the longest time has been, oh gosh, it's how would you equate this? You know, it, it basically is an experiment, but when you get down to it, all these seedings of life start as benevolent exper experiments for the most part. Sometimes they get hijacked. And many of you might recognize these concentric circles that were described by Plato of Atlantis, and you have the depiction of a saucer there. The Atlantean civilization was a civilization that outright everybody knew. I mean, you had Terrans, for lack of a better word, and you had extraterrestrials coming and going. The interaction with Mars, the GG were on Mars, they were mining it. And there's humans and reptilians mining Mars to this day, right now, working together. Right now, there's humans and reptilians on Mars. And there's also beings in the planet and under the seas. We're not alone right now at all. This was a given. People understood this. It's been wiped from our memory in the dark ages. They've tried to twist everything into a totally different construct because the reality of, of, of our situation is we're controlled by non-human entities. They don't want you to know they even exist. They want you to think of everything in a totally different light. But we found a 200,000-year-old city in southern Africa. Every History is being rewritten. We found gold mines in South Africa from before Homo sapiens could possibly work gold mines. We found metallic spheres that are literally 2 billion years old. This is uh, a planet that has had all sorts of interaction. All sorts of interaction. I'll have all the links for you guys if you want to go uh, deeper with non-homo sapien beings. Homo sapiens is, is, is a relative newcomer on this planet, and life has been on this planet for a very long time. Of course, this planet has been reborn, as we've shared with you guys. You hear the myths of Tiamat. Well, your feet are on the remnants of Tiamat right now, as long as your feet are not up in the air. This is Tiamat, reborn after the destruction and it's fascinating to, to 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 realize that when we look to the asteroid belt that lies between mars and jupiter that's where tiamat was earth took its position here the third planet from its previous position when it was tiamat and a much larger planet part of why we have giants too is just the fact that the planet itself was so much larger despite 
also the fact of the yugas. When we look to the Basque mythology, so you wonder, okay, well, what were their myths? Well, the Basque, again, highest concentration of this Rh negative blood. Their mythology and their mindset and their history is divine feminine. And, you know, they were a matriarchal society. And this is speaking back to us when we were in these other ages. When did the patriarchal mindset and system take over? It was with the Dark Age. We recognized that the mother was not evil. So when you even talk about Gnosticism and different Gnostic philosophies, there are some Gnostics that believe that everything in the physical realm is evil. It's not. It's not. No, this was created to be an exploration. This was created to be an adventure so we could learn more about ourselves because ultimately we are consciousness. We just inhabit these bodies for a particular time period, but they do affect us and we do learn and grow from this. And this is also why there can't be intervention of a big type because it would take away it would be cheating in a game where if all of a sudden your friend came in and punched in cheat codes for you, you can't claim that you learned from that game. This is why we have to do it on ourselves, but we can find that the Basque, they worship the mother side of things. They were of a matriarchal society. This society also existed in some other areas as well that were totally wiped out totally wiped out. This is why you had witch hunts. Th because these people understood connecting to the goddess energy, connecting to the earth's own energy can heal us. It can ground us. It can root us. It could also start to uncover and unravel some of the mysteries of our own DNA and give us our hidden history. They couldn't have this. They couldn't have this. Who couldn't have this? The controllers couldn't have this. Our genes have been tampered with. There are different creation stories. Many people have, have caught that, you know, there seem to be two creation stories in the Bible. And it's been talked about. There's been numerous, um, there's been numerous people that made note of this, scholars. And again, there is one after the fall. There's a revision. So here you see Enki and Nima creating Adam. And Adam, you know, it, again, when we go to the flood story, it's Manu in Hinduism. M-A-N, man, you. And Ad Adama, Adapa. Yes, our genes have been tampered with. They've been altered. When you look to the grays, uh, you know, those are just your worker bees for the most part. There's many different beings, many different species involved. Why do alien abductions always seem to be around DNA? They are always so concerned with monitoring our DNA, looking at environmental changes happening in our bodies. They're looking at the DNA is, is the language. It's the computer language of the physical body. It's the coding. So when we go to that second chromosome fusion, that again, this looks like it's, Evidence of interventionism. This is from creation.com, Creation Ministries International. And so, yeah, this, this planet, this universe was created by benevolent beings. We've been hijacked by malevolent beings. We've been given all new belief systems from these malevolent beings that just want to use us as a resource. When you look to the chromosomes and you look to all the great apes, why do they have more chromosomes than humans? Why do we have what appears to be a fusion? So when you see 24 pairs of chromosomes in all of the primate family, besides humans and extinct Neanderthals and Denisovans, 23, do you find that human chromosome number two which is one of the largest chromosomes in the body, has a fusion point, which they are trying to debunk now. They're trying to actively debunk it because we're catching on to it. The telomeres at the end of the chromosomes, that's all about aging. 
And when you look at, well, what does the second chromosome do? Well, it does have properties that can control aging. So when you look back to the Greek myths and Prometheus, who is a titan creating humans, and, and again, Prometheus has been equated with Enki, there, there's a lot of these different stories that are they're really talking about two different creation stories. But the point I want to get across is when you come down to our, our real selves, because your soul, the real you, the higher self, wasn't created at the time this body was created. No, 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 no. no you that's from source. So you could see here, the second and third chromosomes are in humans fused together to make chromosome number two. How could this possibly has have happened? And what's interesting too is when we look back at the older articles, you know, the scientists are, are just saying they're per, per, you know totally perplexed. They don't understand it now. Debunking and fact checking are coming out. Mm -hmm. And you know, I I want to go back to um, belief systems and understanding and being compassionate for what people are going through because believe me we are all basically <laughs> in the petri dish together we are all being experimented on you know some families they tinker with more than other families you know depending on what we are supposed to supposed to be be doing here so and a lot of things when it comes to science we still have to develop that discernment because don't forget the Controllers are giving us all of this information, but that doesn't mean we throw all of the information out into the water. It means we develop discernment and say, okay, you read this, and then when you when you work on these abilities, you can have this sudden understanding that, no, that's not right, but that is right. You just have this knowing, and it does take time to develop that, but I really need to encourage people if if you do want to go through some type of development the most important thing you can do for yourself is to heal past traumas go through the family line heal family lineage traumas that is so important because with that healing comes this ability to discern we need to work on healing our emotions because it's the emotions that can control a lot of the dna a lot of the dna um having an understanding of emotions is really important too and ultimately when we say the dark ages it's really a dark age for emotions because people don't understand that if you are are having traumas this can bring about certain dis-ease disease put that word apart and put it together dis-ease it causes all kinds of problems and it's very difficult to pull that information out of a western system too they just want to say, oh, you're having this problem with your stomach? Here, let's give you some antacid. Well, the problem that you're having with your stomach is because there's something in your life that you simply cannot stomach. You cannot carry it with you. It hurts. It hurts. So you have to go back to that hurt sometimes, not all the time, and try to figure out where did this come from. Now, we don't have to do this all the time, but it is important we examine it because sometimes hurts are so traumatizing that if you address them, it brings up more hurt. So there, there is a level of discernment there too. But look how much information we have in this society when it comes to healing our emotions. They keep it hidden. They keep it really hidden because that's where it's at. And then we have our junk DNA, which they say can be 90% or more of the DNA that we have. So what is junk DNA, really? And again, there has been an act of creation to bring everything into being. There is a benevolent God, quote unquote, um, creator God, that thought this entire universe into reality. Absolutely. So in that sense, yes, we believe without a doubt there is creation. Part of the process that happens after the creation happens on how things grow is evolution. But it's not Darwinian evolution. Again, Darwin was, again, another one of the controller's minions to distort things and to twist things so that it's con in their, their narrative. And then what happens is there's a, a lot of, you know, we could really equate this to, we, 
I don't want to diminish uh, the pain, the pleasure, the love, the anger, the sorrow, the, all the different things we experience as we take an incarnation into this realm. But in so many ways, you can equate it to a video game and, and, and a virtual reality game. Just think about this. You have this computer programmer of a very, very benevolent nature that creates this, this new amazing virtual reality experience and then what happens, you know, other people say, hey, I would love to experience this, you know, this project that you have going on. It sounds amazing. So they are outside of this experience at first. They, they already are. But then they go through into this matrix, this virtual reality, this created universe of this one particular benevolent controller of which there are an infinite multitude out there this is the multiverse and they experience this they are touched by the controller's nature as just the very act of coming into this experience that was created by this controller puts that controller's nature into the experience so, you know, the, the God, the creator God that created this universe, you know, that essence is in all of us, as well as the essence of source, because there is a source even behind that creator God that created this universe in the first place. Then you have all these beings of a very, very high nature, very high frequency, and these could be beings that we could equate to being on seventh density, perhaps, and higher they also come in and take part in the project. These are also, quote-unquote, in some ways, creator gods. Now, you could view them as perhaps these are programmer engineers that are not quite on that level where they're ready to create a whole universe, but they are very advanced. They have tremendous knowledge, understanding, and a tremendous amount of love in their hearts because, you know, again, the more love we hold and compassion we hold and that wonder and joy at the very act of creating, that is source nature. That's source nature. So that's taking us closer to source. So they come in and they actually start to help create along, you know, they're co-creators in this great um, experiment. At, known as this particular universe. So they come along and they're creating new galaxies. They're creating new planets. They're, then there's another level down, uh, again, you can say of other engineers, technicians, so to speak, in today's modern day terms, that can go in and, and see where, okay, this planet, if we nudged it one degree closer to the sun, the conditions will be ripe for, for life. So there are these beings that do what we would call terraforming, uh, very much like what we see in Star Trek and other sci-fi. Uh, and, and again, as you go farther on down the line, these beings become more dense. And so when we talk about like very, very high vibrational beings, they wouldn't even have a distinct form or pattern of perhaps light that you could even recognize any sort of shape or form. It would just be a consciousness that's kind of almost pure consciousness. And as you go down in the densities, they start to take a form. They take a shape. And they they are more dense and able to interact to a different degree with the creation itself, with, with these, this game, this, you know, this virtual reality that we find ourselves in. And then you can also have some very, very high beings that decide, I'm going to get into that game in a very, very uh, big way. And they take a, a fractal, a small percentage of their own consciousness because they can't they're too big, too expansive to be contained in this game, their entirety. Can you literally jump in your TV set? Can you jump in your PS2? No, you, you can't jump in your PS2, but you can experience the reality in your PS2 if there is a PS2, PS3. I'm so out of that whole thing now. But anyway, you know, at the same time, the greatest experiments just within our own mind. But there are these beings that, that 
go and 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 alter it from within many what we would call star seeds light workers are that type of being that come in in order to correct a program so our junk dna to get back into that and i hope that analogy helps with some people and, and i hope i didn't go too far over here um but the dna that we call junk dna it a lot of it is just basically turned off some of it will and and actually is being activated right now because of the light because of the energy coming in from the sun and again the sun is a relay from god with the big g from source it it brings what it brings light what's light light is is information and it's encoding and changing our dna and you can see well what does some some of these uh quote unquote junk dna segments what do they do well number 10 aid in fighting disease number nine repair dna and number eight is regulating embryological development we see what's going on right now on the planet is the antithesis of what the benevolent source of all what the benevolent creator of this universe and also what the benevolent Elohim, quote unquote, um, the true Elohim, the creator gods, so to speak, that aided in, in the seeding of life on this planet in the first place uh, are trying to do and, and tried to do in the original sense. These beings that are here on the planet are all about control, regulation, and stopping the natural order of things. So, you know, with all of that information, it, I think um, understanding that we all kind of have, we all come down here with a spacesuit, and we all come down here with certain things that are blocked from our memory for developmental purposes. That's important to remember. Our brains, our bodies, they are a deliberate filter in so many ways. But as the sun comes in, the sun, the light of the sun burns away that filter and it brings us realizations, aha moments, epiphanies. All of these things happen to us and we finally realize that, wow, things are not what I thought they were. This is really exciting. So let's go look and see what else. What else is exciting? So just remember, everyone has their own spacesuit. It's it's from a different place, and it's just that. It's a spacesuit. It's important. It is our temple. we got to take care of it because the cleaner running you are, the more you're going to be able to perceive, the more the light can run through you without having any stops, without having any backups. And here we see the human brain can create dimensional structures in the, up to 11 dimensions. So we are not a operating even remotely at what we're supposed to be operating in these vehicles. And the real us, the, the higher self, the source, the soul, so to speak, is amazing and limitless. It, it truly is. Again, God dwells within each and every one of us. But even in this reality, we are so much more than what we are now. And we have been purposely disengaged you guys might have heard of the god gene that came out and and how scientists are talking about cutting us off from it this is part of the bigger picture because they want us isolated they want us in this dark uh, small little reality where we are serving them we they want us to be their slaves they want us to serve them but we are creators that's our natural state of being. This is what we are. So you could say that we are co-creators with, with God, co-creators with source. And yet they want to, again, go back to that Sumerian perspective. And humans were just created to be a slave race for the gods. But these gods are not gods. And they're, they're not benevolent. They're selfish entities. Uh, that distort the natural order of things. So again, hopefully you guys have gotten something from all this. And we've talked about how when you look to all the indigenous peoples all over the globe who have been so assaulted, this is what they will tell you. And whether we're talking uh, South America, North America, Australia, Africa, Europe, Asia, 
they know. They know. They understand the concepts of wormholes. What? Yes. And and it's in again in the in hidden in the Vedas and in the Hindu books are are the knowledge of the shape of our galaxy, how long it it takes to travel from one corner of the galaxy to another. They understood such things as concepts of wormholes and light years. And interesting that the Pleiades come up here. First Nations people had a deep understanding of the sky, even pondered such topics as cosmology and quantum physics. One example is the star cluster called the Pleiades, or in Western culture, the Seven Sisters. The Cree refer to it as the hole in the sky. When they're referring to a hole in the sky, they're referring to a spatial anom anomaly. They're referring to a wormhole, an alternate reality. They meditated on these things. They dreamed about these things. They saw, see, meditation and being at one with the nature, with nature, it opens up all these doors. If we buy into their system, only read their books and keep taking everything that they're uh, PRE scribing to us, that's going to close down those aspects of our brain that allow us to experience the greater whole and have knowledge of this, uh, then we're lost in the dark. And that's exactly what they want. Stars are part of our lives. Every night they're out there. And my people believe we come from the stars. We come from the stars is, is repeated from all the indigenous people all over the world. And that's the bottom line. So as always, guys, thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Thanks for your patience going through this. It's it's hard to you know explain all these things in a short period of time, and uh, you know we'll keep doing our best. Just nibble at it, if you will, and come back to it. And please do share it. As always, may you be blessed by the true Creator of this universe and by Source itself. Source bless and Namaste. Namaste.